Trip Tobin is uh, he's done a lot of work in the past six months trying to get two teams up for this season, and uh, you know I think you've got some pretty good players on all on both teams. Oh yeah, we have great talent. You know, there's an unbelievable group of kids that come out and want to be part of what we're what we're doing. And um, you know, it just uh, it, it took a little while to get the coaching staff squared away to where I was comfortable that we could handle you know, 36 kids to, to 40 kids. So um, I'm just appreciative of those guys. And the pe- my, bro- my brother-in-law, Ethan, my sister, Tasha, doing a lot of the administrative things. And then you spoke of the coaches on the field and Sam Walls. And then you have, uh, you know, um, Andrew Stevens has been helping us out tremendously, you know, with just him and Mike been uh, throwing bat in practice and just doing the things that, that, that could help us uh, handle that many kids at one time and, and do it successfully and do it the right way. And we talked to you, obviously, this whole season kind of has led up to what you were able to secure in the financing for P.O. Faulkner Park to get the turf down on the field. And, you know, that means less maintenance over the summer. Uh, and that helps out, obviously, the Martinsburg Bulldog team is, you know, obviously that means Coach Byler could take a vacation and not have to worry about, you know, making sure the field's tip-top shape every day for your games as he wants a tip-top shape field. Uh, but uh, how much kind of do you think that that has helped maybe – with more players wanting to play for your team and, you know, having the ability to make two teams this year? Well, first off, he can't take a vacation. That's in the contract, so <laughs> he can't leave regardless. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, th- having the turf field certainly helped us, uh, you know, have a long-term home and relationship with Martinsburg High School in, in the Berkeley County. And, uh, you know, I don't know if the, if the facility plays into it as much. I hope it's more of a of, of our program as opposed to just playing on turf. But it certainly helps us in, in multiple ways of being able to play more games without, uh, you know, tearing the field up. Uh, less maintenance, as you said, on us. It'll give us more time to focus on the kids. I mean, we can go out there right at 6 o'clock and practice and be out there by 8.15. Everybody can get home instead of, you know, setting the field up, lining the field and, you know, raking the field afterwards and that type of thing. So it helped us tremendously in that part. And, uh, you know, I think that's really, really been a great thing that we're able to spend more time at practice and less time on field maintenance. But, um, uh, you know, we just want to thank everybody in the community for supporting us and uh, and the American Legion Post 14 for, uh, you know, helping us along the way. They'll be out there Saturday morning for our um, first game with the senior team. And we're supposed to, you know, the Air Guards, Air Guard weekend, they're going to do a flyover at 1250. So that's going to be pretty neat as well. So a lot. A lot of people uh, behind the scenes and a lot of finances, Randy Smith and uh, Delegate uh, Jason Barrett and uh, Mike Hornby and a lot of those guys have just come through and and uh, just been tremendous help to us. And you mentioned the talent of the program. I believe four guys between the two teams are playing down at the state tournament right now. So and that shows how much talent you guys have on your team that those guys are having success in their high school seasons and uh, you'll be without those guys then this weekend. So uh, how does that affect things in terms of the roster? But also, what do you hope it, or what do you think about Hedgesville's chances down at the state tournament? Well, I think they have an excellent chance. I think the fact that they have guys that are hitting the ball well, one through nine, I think the fact that they have some uh, pitcher-only guys uh, they can throw out there and not disrupt their defense, they can keep their, their defense intact. I think the way they attack the baseball and run the bases um, and just the, the youth and just, just the grit that they have, you know, it's just the heart and the passion that they play with is just something that you don't teach and uh, and it has to come from within and, and, and that group has that and a lot of times that'll supersede you know talent at times if you get out there so not to say that they're not as talented by any means but they are going up against some great competition and uh, I just think they have a lot of the pieces of the puzzle to make a championship team you mentioned it earlier trip that tomorrow's the first game for your senior team the junior season has already started what can we I guess expect on both sides for both squads this year well, I, you know, I think the junior squad has been, you know, the, kind of the most difficult to um, schedule for because, you you know, they, they do have a mix of rising seniors to rising sophomores, and um, and they have a lot of varsity experience, so you want to play a really good 18-19 new schedule. You don't want to, you know, you don't want them to ever have to face a team possibly like Leesburg that we're going to face Tuesday night, but uh, they certainly want to get them in there and, and get them the reps against some very good quality teams and not ever have them play down. So you have to kind of vet the uh, competition so that they are playing, you know, 
uh, you know, slightly above their ability as they move forward through the summer and, and never play down. And, uh, you know, as far as the senior team goes, I mean, we just play the best teams that we can find in the area. I mean, we're going to play, we're going to, you know, we invited ourselves basically down to Chesapeake, Virginia to play Chesapeake. And Chesapeake uh, made a good showing last year in the American Legion World Series. Um, they were just, uh, you know, they, uh, Leesburg took them to the championship game in the Virginia State Championship. Frederick took them to the championship game in the regionals. You know, and, and Frederick, Leesburg, Chesapeake's on our schedule. The Swarsville team that we're playing Saturday has a great program that has a developmental team, 15 and under. They have a 17U team. They have a 19U team. They're a state champion a couple of years ago in Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, Boonesboro played us really well. We just have very good competition that we we play. And, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to gauge our success on any type of winning percentage because I think we're playing some tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, competition this summer. It's going to push our older guys as well. And you talk about older guys there. Let's, uh, you know, we talk about all the players that you get from the EPAC that are currently playing baseball or that have, you know, finished their high school careers. But you got a lot of guys returning from college after their freshman year. Braden Stottlemyer, Chase Herndon, Connor Bailey, Griffin Horowitz, and uh, Ty Broughton, just to name, you know, those guys. And, you know, obviously they played last year. They wanted to play again is my presumption on this and obviously if you got guys wanting to play and they're not aged out yet you're gonna you're gonna have them yeah it's, it's been, yeah they're all they're all back i mean you know ty rotten at the moment is um visiting uh his family in, in florida but the rest of them are back oh, and griffin horowitz is actually in the field at the moment you know at the army so um and uh so, and when he in the field i mean he's actually training right now so i expect him to come back in tip-top shape but in conversation with him and his parents and we expect him back around the 10th and uh he's going to be a big part of what we do um he's kind of transitioned over to outfield you know at army so he redshirted, but uh, playing every day, playing on the on the um, I guess you called the B team or the red shirt team, and just can't wait to get all those guys back. But as soon as a couple go, come back, a couple go on vacation. That's why you have a big roster. So I doubt you ever see us at 18 men deep, but uh, I think we have some very very replaceable parts when one guy has to work or or go on vacation or be at. Uh, you know, family gathering or something. I think it allows them to have their summer a little bit as well, not just, you know, be 100% baseball, but have, uh, you know, God, family, and baseball. And really, you guys only aged out just a few players from last year. So you had a relatively young team last year. So to have everybody coming back this season, uh, or a lot of guys coming back this season, that's got to be exciting for your team as well. Yeah, we added five guys. You know, we aged out a few guys and, um, and so we added five new guys, and we you know we aged out our middle infield with Kamian and and uh, and Jack and um, you know a couple other guys uh, here and there. But I mean we had to we had to find some middle guys. So we started looking hard in the spring and talked to Carson you know, Boober, talked to Braylon. Um, you know those guys that pick up those spots. Bray, uh, Stoudemire says he's not ready to just become a pitcher only yet. He still has aspires to possibly play some middle infield at some point in time at Shepherd. So he wants some reps there as well. You know Baden Hartman, uh, middle guy that can play there. Trish got Dylan, but we also have uh, you know have have worked out some things where Braden Oviedo can play for us, an up and coming EPAC guy who's just played tremendous this year and opened up a lot of eyes and uh, kind of caught on to the tail end of this when uh, unfortunately Michael. Lupus went down, and we'd love to have had him. And our thoughts and prayers are for him as he came home yesterday from his surgery. Hoped he can make it out tomorrow at the ballpark. Talk a little bit about your staff and how great it is to have their experience alongside uh, your program. Oh, it's just tremendous. I mean, you know, we've added uh, Jack and Josh. Um, those guys are coming back from great college programs and understand the game very well. The mental part of the game, I loved hearing Grant talk about, you know, the mental part of the game. And, 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 and these two guys beside him, uh, Connor and, and Alex, talking about, uh, you know, being challenged and, and being pushed and not just physically but mentally. And uh, so those guys do that. Uh, they push those guys, having having those guys there that can swing the um, you know the, the fungo and take some of that off of your shoulder, but also having you know Ryan and Sam to work with those pitchers and take care of those arms and be sure that you know the arm care is in place, which is missing a lot in summer baseball. You know, then we brought on a, you know a fellow named Eric Scheller, who's a hood. Uh, 
who's been the hood, a hood assistant, now assisting at Wilson College, was a catcher. So we do have ourselves a pitching coach, a catching coach, two middle infielder guys, and you know we're working the outfield. So we are fully staffed, and you got administrators like I talked about earlier, and you have Ethan out there who can do, you know, many many things for me, and then got Mike and Andrew that'll throw bat in practice or do anything you need for need for me. It just takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of people to be here. That's why it's really tough to have two teams. And you have two teams this year, but also you're bringing in, you're hosting a tournament this year mm -hmm. for the first time, I believe, in a few seasons at least. Uh, how was that to put together, and uh, what are you expecting from that? It's been stressful. You know, it's been really stressful. We're bringing in West Lawn Owls out of PA and uh, Westminster uh, out of, of travel team, Westminster 19U uh, Vipers out of, um, out of Maryland. And, uh, of course, we'll have Frederick there. And Leesburg's going to be there. Boonesboro is going to be there. Morgantown's going to be there. So, you know, these guys are going to come into town, spend the night, spend some money here in the area, and bring a little tourism to the area as well as some really good baseball. People come out and watch the game, and we plan on having announcers and music and the scoreboard and uh, concession stand be open and try to have a, a really good feel for each game and not just, uh, you know, just come out and just kind of be quiet and dull and I think we're going to, I think it's going to be very uh, entertaining for those spectators. And I think it's going to be great competition. And I think it's going to be good for the city as well. You got some, uh, or for you uh, as the manager, you know, we've talked about how you don't expect to have all 18 guys there at one time. But uh, when you look at your roster, you have a lot of guys that can play a lot of different positions. How tough is it to find? Figure out, I guess, where you want to put guys and make sure that they do get, you know, their fair amount of innings at the positions they want to play, whether it be a college or or whatever the case may be. Yeah, that's the part I lose sleep on most. You know, is making sure that these guys get reps. Uh, I look up and see you've got, you know, Canby, Herndon, you know, Sifford. I mean, excuse me, um, uh, shoot, uh, Griffin Horowitz said he wanted to play the outfield. And, you know, Cam Moore plays the outfield some. He catches. And, you know, Jackson Ruiz plays the outfield some. He plays first base. I mean, we're loaded with outfielders. And, uh, you know, how are we going to get all these guys in? But uh, I think the trick is to have a lot of games. Leesburg wants to play nine innings on Tuesday night, and that gives me basically almost, you know, five, four, you know, almost equal. Um, so, you know, we're going to play those guys, and uh, regardless of the hot hand or what have you throughout the season, we're going to let these guys hit through their hit, hit through some of their struggles and play regardless. But regardless, I mean, I think that the, the, the key to that is that you just play as many games as possible so that you can get, and that's why you want to have a big roster too, so that, you know, a guy doesn't feel obligated to miss a dinner or something or miss a family outing because he might leave our team short. So, you know, we want them to have their, it's still summer, and they still need to be kids because they're about to be adults, if not already. So, you know, a big roster uh, helps that and, and a lot of games. And it puts a lot of pressure on us, but as one thing with the turf, we can play a lot of games. So we, 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 we're going to have a good time. We're going to Morgantown. We're going to Chesapeake, Virginia, which is really Virginia Beach. And uh, we'll see how they act down there. We're taking both teams to Morgantown, so that will be fun for me. <laughs> what do you ultimately hope that your players get out of your program? I think I hope they, you know, they get the process. I think they, uh, I think the kids that come here want to be seen. They want to be offered. They want to play at the next level. I think, uh, you know, I think you can send a lot of emails. We can make a lot of phone calls, and and until your until your program is accredited and, and has some integrity with the uh, college coaches, it really doesn't mean anything. So I hope that we can be, you know, have some have some integrity in, in that in the baseball world, you know, at the next level. And uh, and I think we're getting there, you know, quickly. I think guys are seeing the talent that Eastern Panhandle has. And, um, you know, it, it's it's a lot of talent that college coaches are after. And I hope that we can send these young men to them for visits and, and, they, and they are able to impress and have the instruction they need. But I, I always say that I don't want them just to get to college. I want them to be able to get to college and be able to play. You know, it's one thing to get a uniform or, or play or get a walk on, but uh, get an opportunity. But we want to give them, you know, the instruction, the mental game, and the physical uh, instruction that they need and the reps they need to, to at least, you know, you know, take a shot at one of those open spots there and, and perform and, and hopefully play the first year. Last question here for you. Um, there's a new Legion team in the area. Obviously, not everybody can play for you. What are your thoughts on the new Legion team and kind of what it's going to also do for the area? Because there's a lot of baseball players in this area, and they all can't play for you. No, I think it's a great thing that there's there's opportunities across the board. You know, um, 
the paper kind of read that there was a rivalry or what have you when you spoke with their manager, and, and, and that's great. I mean, I love healthy rivalries. You know, I hate unhealthy rivalries um, when things get kind of ugly, you know. But I hope it stays very healthy, and there's guys on that team that I have a real hard time rooting against because I've watched the age, you know, throughout his whole career. I've, I've seen Peyton Gerard throughout his whole career, Caden Compton, those guys, and then now we've seen, you know, the Noah Browns and, and the Chris Frenches and the Canariums and think the things that they can do over at Hedgesville and up and coming. So, you know, I think I think healthy um, rivalries are really good. I think it forces both teams to um, practice harder, you know, and have goals. But I think, you know, when it becomes a rivalry where it's, you know, as long as we beat them, then that's that's all we really care about. Then I think that's when it becomes ugly. And, you know, baseball can be toxic and, and social media can be toxic. But, you know, adults can can ruin a, a young man's game. And I hope that we can keep it healthy. And I hope that our kids can stay um, focused on the, the big goals and hope we can help each other and and just to make the baseball and the pen handle better as a group, as a group of basically three teams now with the senior, junior, and, and another team. And the junior team is going to play their team. We're all going to be in Morgantown together, so it be great. All right. Thanks for coming in, Trip. Thanks for bringing your Junior League team, guys, as we'll be there tonight for the Junior League game tomorrow and all season long at P.O. Faulkner Park for this, the Senior League games. We'll get in a bunch of Junior League games as well, but that'll do it for this segment of the Sportsman.